Hello, it's Jeffrey with Real Nifty Vintage and today I'm here with a really fun video because I have some things that I have never dealt with before and I love when that happens. So today I've got some pottery. It's actually Gouda pottery, pronounced Howda. It's Holland, it's Holland pottery. So this pottery that I will show you is actually all produced in a region over in Holland and it is just simply known as Gouda, G-O-U-D-A, pronounced howda. I don't speak that language, so uh, it's a little bit of a different thing, silent G. But uh, I've got some really fun pieces here. Now, these are all uh, very utilitarian from when they were made, and they are all from the 1920s, some a little bit before that, but none, none of these are really from past 1930s era. So we've got some really interesting older antique items in the Art Nouveau style, which I don't usually get to see so much. The Art Nouveau, we hear a lot about Art Deco. Art Nouveau actually predates Deco. Uh, I do actually have a little note that he's, oh, did I mention where I got this? George, okay. George, the antique nomad, actually sent these to me. I bought them from him, but he had a nice little collection of them from like an estate that he had done a while ago. The Royal Gouda comes from a handful of factories in the town, in that town, Holland where they made the cheese, that's where it got its name. Uh, well, not the, yeah, okay. And also a bunch of little pottery makers. They got inspired by Art Nouveau, design about 1910, and made these intricately painted pieces in all sizes. It was called Rhodian glaze. So the glaze that I'm gonna show you is a Rhodian glaze. It's a matte glaze, in a, uh, as opposed to a shiny, something shiny. You can see the glare on that. Uh, and it let these brightly colored pieces still have a matte finish softness. It became popular worldwide. Also, we see matte glazes in uh, Weller pottery often, and we see it in uh, Roseville. So matte, uh, yeah, matte ceramic is pretty popular. Uh, most of what you have here are uh, 1910 to 1930 by various companies and designers all, as marked on the bottoms. So interestingly, all of these are marked on the bottoms, which does help all that. Then they switch to more Art Deco design, which I'll show you because there is one really cool one. There's a little creamer with a disc handle, uh, and then a more modernist in the 50s, and those are less common because of the occupation that uh, Germany had done. Uh, okay, so a little bit more background, great. So let me just go ahead and jump in, and I will first show you this one here. It's like a little teacup. Oh, here. There we go. So it's a nice little teacup here. So you'll notice a common theme here with the way this stuff looks. It's very floral, very nouveau looking. Art Nouveau is known for their floral and sort of lofty ways about it. It's very flowy, flowery. Okay, and then on the bottom of this particular piece we have here, lots of scribbles. <laughs> it's very difficult to read some of this stuff. I actually already listed all of these items that you're going to be seeing in on my eBay store. And so I did my best to read them, but uh, this one was one that I couldn't really figure out what it said all that well. Uh, <laughs> but it's beautiful, it's a little teacup. Love that one. Now we also have this very nice ashtray look at that very pretty very art nouveau indeed and this one is marked on the bottom holland like the others look at this word now it took me a while to figure this word out i think it's actually something called schoon oh is it like schoonden hound Sco schoonden oven it's basically like sch something something some, even though it looks like s-i-h-o-o-n L-O-V-E-N. I'm not sure, but I couldn't figure out any other word beside the one that I did end up calling it. And I just chalked that up to maybe the English is different than the Holland spelling. I don't know. If, if that's actually, if this middle word here actually says something to your knowledge, I would be happy to find out because I could not find S-I, large H. I, I just don't understand some of this. But 
beautiful ashtray. By the way, I have the prices on my eBay at about, depends on the piece, but about $15 up to 25, I think, plus shipping. This one here is one of my favorites. It's so different than all the others you're gonna be seeing because it's more of like a creamy, well, that's annoying, there we go. Uh, oh, these numbers, just ignore them. I. These were for Aaron, oh, he really, oh, lovely. Um, <laughs> I have everything numbered so that we can easily identify it. So look at that, beautiful. That's a nice one. And it's also written on the bottom. This one's called Irene by the Zenith Company out of Gouda. Very, very pretty. Irene. Now this one here is unfortunate because it's all cracked up and so I'm not gonna probably sell it. It looks like it, would, it was glued back together, but this is a really wonderful footed bowl. Look at the color on that. I mean, it's just, they've got the little handles. Oh, so pretty. This is all single molded stuff for the most part, so you're not going to have a lot of applied pieces here. It's a single mold. That's a more cost-effective way it's done. In fact, I believe many companies over in Holland, whenever this was becoming a thing, they started out doing pipes, making men's pipe or pipes in general. And then they eventually switched to this kind of decorative. Oh, it wouldn't have been decorative. It was useful objects that they used. They switched for money reasons. They wanted to get in on that action. So these are utilitarian, not just decorative things. They use these items. And oftentimes they would have been sold as sets or different lines of names. So uh, while a lot of these are very random looking, uh, they were part of like, you know, sets, like I just said. Okay, Barb actually, I'm getting just, okay. Barb is going to get this one from me. So this one is the one she claimed. It's really pretty. It's like little handles on it. And this one is also marked on the bottom right there. This one is, that's that word again, S-C-H, here it is, S-C-H-O-O-N, schoon for oven or schoon hoven, schoon hoven. This one more, more easily says schoon hoven. The other one looks like something else. But how many weird words can there be? It, they all seem very, that seems very similar. Okay, I'm jabbery, jibbery, jiggly jia. I just get on, I, I overthink. It's a problem, I need to learn to not. Okay, then we have this one here. This is called Anger, A-N-J-E-E-R. -E -E it's a beautiful little one. This is one of my favorites. Why are we having issues? Could we just, there we go. Yeah, this is one of my favorites with the colors and the shape. It has the three little feet on it. Beautiful. This one here is actually a glossy one. One of It's the only glossy one I have, but it's really pretty purple. Look at that, and gray. That's nice. And the bottom does read Violetta. I did as much research as I could and I could not find anything online called Violetta. So, yeah. There's a little icon on this one. It's very legible on this one. Some are harder to read because they're smaller bases and more scribbled. But that is the house right there. It's very well known for Gouda pottery in I believe the brand PZH. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. And I believe it represents Lazarus, the door of Lazarus or something along those lines. But it's very interesting. Wonderful little purple thing. And then we've got this one, more deco because of the way that it's kind of molded. Can you see the, like, yeah, it kind of reminds me of something very deco, geometric. And then look at the brown, very pretty. So that's that one right there. This one is also Zenith, Zenith Gouda. So that's, that's wonderful. Now we do have one fake, uh, like everything, there were fakes of Gouda by the Japanese because that's all they know how to, no, it's not all they know how to do. <laughs> um, it's just, you know, that's, that's what they do. Uh, and I'm actually surprised because there is some weight to this and usually 
with uh, Japanese knockoffs, you're going to find things that are lighter weight because they have to be shipped across the world and all this. But this one is made in Japan. Interesting. I'll show you that right there. And they really tried hard to uh, make you fold. As you can notice, the word made in Japan is like scribbled on. Isn't that interesting? What does scribbled on words remind you of? Does it remind you of that scribbled mess? Maybe. You know, it's fine. It's a really pretty example of the style of Gouda pottery. Huda, Houda. Houda <laughs> pottery. But um, yeah, it's pretty. Here's another one right here. This is also Zenith. Little bud vase looking thing. I'm upset with this camera. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's really pretty. This one has a lot of great color in it and movement. I really like that one a lot too. Splashes of blue and orange. Okay, so that's a good one. Oh, this one here too. This one is the, uh, this one's called Gladys. G-L-A-D-Y-S. Made in Holland. Oh. Uh, look, I just, that cobalt blue, that's pretty. Look at that, it's like a little picture. That's a nice one. Okay, just have a handful more. This one's a cute little pitcher, little creamer guy. What is this one called? Regina, Regina George. No, it's just, it's just Regina, but that's really pretty, isn't it? I think so, beautiful. This one I like as well. This one is made by, this is called Metz Royal, M-E, M-E-T-Z, I believe. Zuid Holland. Gouda. Gouda. Huda. Howda. I keep forgetting how to pronounce the name. That's a lovely one. Here's a nice little one. This kind of reminds me of like an oil vinegar or something. Look at that color. It's bordered with the blue and the, that's nice. That's a nice one. This one is called Romeo. Romeo. That's that one. Here we have another little two-handled vase. This one is called Candia. Oh, that's so pretty. So vibrant. Mm, that's a nice one. I'm gonna show you now the deco one. This is the one deco one that he mentioned. And you can obviously, obviously see how it's, it kind of looks like the side of a mouse. Um, it's very deco looking with this disc handle here. So, and then we've got the flowers. The shape is even sort of deco looking of the, of the spout and all that, very geometric. So this one is marked Another one of those names I tried looking up as best as I could and I could find zero um, information about it. It looks like it says Sa Satino, S-A-T-I-N-O, made in Holland. I'll show you that. It could just be a language barrier, that second word right here. S, that looks like an S to me, but I could be off. I've been off before. We have just two little vases, I think. Yep, well, yeah, I mean, I bros, bros. I breezed through some of these, but that's okay. You get the idea. They are listed all on eBay. Then we have these two. They look like they would go together, but they, but they don't. So this one here is just marked NM with like a little symbol. These symbols do mean something. I just never did look up. Like they're like date codes and things. And so, I mean, you could figure this stuff out. I just didn't, but it's a beautiful little bud vase. How cool. How cute is that? We've got that one, and then finally, this one. Kind of similar, huh? And that one has, I think it's a, uh, the house uh, design with, looks like PZA, or PZH Holland. It's so hard to tell on some of these because it's scribbled. See this, like whatever that says, I think that says PZH, but very difficult to read. That is actually the haul. So hopefully you got a, a great, hopefully you had a, hopefully you had a great time. 
<laughs> with this stuff because I think it's very different and I've never seen it. And that's just the great thing about buying from other resellers in other areas, especially George, the antique nomad being nomadic and all across the US and I think Canada sometimes, he's able to see many different things that I just don't come into contact with. That would hopefully change for me over time. I would like to get out and see different areas, go maybe go to Denver, Colorado, see the brass armadillo over there, see Gary Stover if he's still kicking. I have not heard from him in a while. Not that I talked to him, but he used to put out lots of videos on the brass armadillo uh, YouTube channel that uh, I just haven't seen him. I don't know what's going on. But uh, yeah, that'd be kind of fun to go over that region. And um, that's a pretty nice large size mall if I, if I think if I think so. I think so it is, yes. I will wrap up this video here. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye-bye.